looking into some of these cool features of the Sentinels of the Lost City. <laughs> That's awesome. These formations are just unbelievable. Another one of those hidden gems in Australia. Uh, that is unreal. We are heading into Lemon National Park at the moment to check out the Lost Cities. That was a pin on the map that I put on years ago because they looked pretty interesting, so we're gonna check it out. Last night we stayed just outside of Daly Waters in the Highway Motor Inn, it was called. We just grabbed a motel room. We did run into Daly Waters and had a look at the pub. We were there 30 years ago, and boy oh boy has that place changed. It is, for me, it's a complete example of something being loved to death. The pub itself is still there, but it has been expanded massively. So you walk in there and they've got, you know, tons and tons of beer taps. You got Irish and Scottish backpackers serving you your beer. So there's no original publicans around there anymore. You go into the back area where the entertainment is and you got a dude playing guitar. You've got somebody on a pizza oven cooking pizzas. You know, that pub could be sitting in the middle of Brisbane or Melbourne or Sydney for that matter. The other thing that I found difficult to wrap my head around was the amount of people there. There would have been two or three hundred caravans in that caravan park around the pub. And there were people walking up and down the street. They've got old FJ Land Cruiser bodies lined along the road. They got helicopters, old helicopter frames and plane frames. I guess somebody thought that that'd be a good idea and that the tourists would be interested in that. And who knows, maybe they are. But it certainly is not a genuine Australian pub anymore. Daily Waters is now a tourist trap. For some people, that's their jive, and that's pretty cool. But uh, for me, I walked away there a little bit disappointed. It's a quirky little pub that's corporate owned. That's what, <laughs> what it is. Yeah, mm. everything's about money. It is indeed. So You'll never find any locals having a beer there, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure you pay more just to have your beer there. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, there are still plenty of authentic Australian pubs out there, and that's where you'll find us having a brewski. But in the meantime, let's continue our journey into this uh, Lemon National Park, which is Northern Territory's third largest national park. We're only going to touch the southern end, where these rock formations are. The northern end, you've got actually access to the Gulf, so it'll be a pretty big fishing area, I'd suspect. We're about 50 or 60 kilometers into the track now, and we're coming up to the turnoff for Lorella Springs. Unfortunately, that is now closed to the public. I'm not sure of the reason for that, whether it was insurance issues or native title issues, but that was a pin in the map that I had as a bucket list place to visit, and it is now out of bounds. Although that sign there just said closed for 2023, maybe that means 2024 might be different. We have just started the walk into the southern lost city and just like Keep River we have impeccable timing because it's the hottest part of the day. Unfortunately that's just the way it's going to work out for us. Our plan is to do the southern lost city walk now then we'll head out to the ranger station which I believe is 20 or 30 kilometers away. We'll get the code for the Western Lost City. We'll set up camp at our Butterfly Falls Overflow Camp. Then we'll chill for the rest of the afternoon. Tomorrow morning at Sparrows, we'll head out to the Western Lost City. This walk is 2.5 kilometer, grade three apparently. We're already starting to get into some of the rock formations. Have a look at the pattern on this sucker. It's about 30 degrees out at the moment. So it's a bit toasty. If I had my choice, I'd be another 10 degrees cooler than it is, but I don't. So we just got to suck that up. Very light breeze and 0% humidity. So there is that. Starting to get into some of these cool features of the Sentinels of the Lost City. It's odd, there's a jerry can sitting here on the side of the track, not for human consumption. Oh, who'd carry a jerry can in here and why? It's very cool, isn't it, hon? It is. The colors are really pretty. They're very pretty. I thought they were going to be very similar to the bungles, but they're not. Interesting Look when you come through how orange that sand is. Okay. It nearly falls down. Oh wow. It's ground rock. <laughs> 
That's awesome. <laughs> These things are just massive. Have a look at the size of Jill compared to them. I am liking this southern lost city very much. Jill found a stick. You know why? Because her eyes are gazing up at that bloody beautiful scenery in front of her. <laughs> this is just unbelievable. We just met a couple of boys that are filming a documentary and they've got um, all these balls white balls sitting out through these rocks to do some 3D scanning. Unbelievable. Have a look at the skinny base on this guy. It's probably only a meter in diameter. We go up, 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 up. Have a look at Jill at the base of these pillars here. Ah, oh, that is stunning. Both Jill and the pillars. These formations are just unbelievable. Another one of those hidden gems in Australia. Jill goes into the city. Hopefully she's got the keys to the city or we're in trouble. We <laughs> did hear that. She said she's having a night on the town. This is cool. I think we've got a couple of spires that have toppled over. This one's landed on its side. Looks like it was the head. Man, I've almost twisted my ankle like 20 times because you're keeping your eyes up looking at the scenery, not where you're walking. And for me, that's dangerous. I was considering wearing thongs. I'm glad I didn't, actually, because there is a bit of rock scrambling here. My head's going to snap off from being on the end of a swivel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. These spires are just amazing. Have a look at the flatness of that face on that particular spire. All right, there's a sea bottom on that. So this is all sedimentary rock that used to be on the sea floor. We are walking right downtown at the moment. Why can't modern cities look like this and be designed like this? Turn my 
Yeah. They're all slightly tilted as well. I've got a lean on them of about, I don't know, five degrees. And they're all tilted in the same direction. I bet you could get lost in here easy enough if you didn't have the trails. Oh yeah, definitely, Terry. We're outside the city walls now, and I think we're gonna be leaving the city altogether, which is pretty sad. There's a few sentinels here left before we step outside the city gates. Well, I absolutely rate this walk and rate this park, at least this part of the park. This lost city is like nothing that I've ever seen before. There's butterflies all along this wall. And here comes Jill leaving the final city gate. Your thoughts on the lost city, hun? seen before. No, it's really, really pretty. Well, let's hope the western lost city is something like the southern lost city. Well, closed. Western lost city access. That is a bummer. Just filming the mess the lorikeets have made in our campsite. Haven't they, Tear? All these bloody pieces of gravillia that they just skipped off, which is their food source. So I don't know what the heck they're doing that for. I gotta do it, hun. I can't pass up a good swamp hole. Okay. <laughs> Breeze is picking up. I've been getting eaten, eaten by mosquitoes already at, you know, 4.35 in the afternoon. Hopefully this helps keep the mosquitoes away a bit. It's a little bit of water coming down the falls over there. did any video recording. So we have now been transported to a place called Leichhardt Falls, which is about 50 kilometers outside of Burktown. We're on the track going into it at the moment to check it on out. No crocodiles over in there, Terry. Yeah, yes. Crocodile country city. Yes. I suspect this place will be pretty busy. Me too. Because it's pretty popular. I can see a caravan to the right. Truck. Yep, there's, there'll be lots of people. I see the falls. Oh wow, they're a lot bigger than I thought they were going to be. That's neat. Yeah, that's a very popular camp spot. A quick count, I'd say there'd be 20 cars in here. Let's go check out the falls anyway. Well, Jaffa Adventures, welcome to the Gregory River. The last time you saw us, we were out at the Leichhardt River at Leichhardt Falls. We didn't end up camping there because it was just too crowded. If I was going to count the caravans there, there would have been 40 to 50. And as you guys know, that's not our jive. We're just not into that massive group scene like that. So we pushed on, despite the fact that Leichhardt Falls was beautiful, and we found this epic little camp. <laughs> There's Jilly. We're actually on a little bit of an island. There's water where I'm standing, and there's water behind us, and Jill's on an island. And yes, there are crocs here apparently, so you do need to be croc wise. We are not too far from Mellish Park, and Mellish Park is a massive tourist area as well, where you've got about a billion caravans. However, there are a couple of four-wheel drive tracks that lead into the Gregory River, and if you take them, you might just have an opportunity to get a spot like this all to yourselves. And you know what? For us, that has been the theme across this trip. But you do have to put a little bit of effort in to find these out-of-the-way places. Most people congregate around one another and in these major tourist traps. I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Some people are genuinely fearful to camp alone. So, you know, there's that whole safety in numbers thing. Some people are genuinely fearful of actually taking some of these off-road tracks because, you know, you might get bogged. And if you're not all that confident with your four-wheel drive abilities, you know, you could get yourself into some trouble. So I get that. Well, I think one of the biggest reasons people miss places like this is just laziness. It's easy to just pull off the bitumen and park on that camp at the side of the road where everybody else is. Places like this require a little bit of investigation 
you might have to drop your tires to get into places like this that sort of stuff so it's not easy but you tell me have a look around here is that worth the effort all by ourselves on the gregory river on a four-wheel drive camp i'm telling you it does not get any better than this okay maybe it gets a little bit better than this just cooking tea <laughs> yay and what are we gonna have for tea tonight ham uh, rice like a flavored rice pack and I'm, we're eating everything we have left yep and then some canned green beans nice one i'm there okay <laughs> Jill? Hello. What you doing? Uh, I just made some wraps and put them in the travel buddy for lunch. <laughs> Baby! <laughs> Terry's happy now. <laughs> All is right. Yep. Terry walking with his beach groper thongs on. Oh, I thought you were going to wet your hair. That looks like a cow licked you. <laughs> Bye. Okay, see ya. Bye. the road into that little river campsite that we were just at. Warning, crocodile reported in this area in the last seven days. Be croc wise in croc country. We didn't see any crocs or signs of crocs, but definitely they would be in there. Welcome to Mary Kathleen. We are going to head straight out to the mine site. It's almost midday and we want to make sure that the lighting conditions are right so that we can see that or blue water properly. Then we'll duck into town, grab a burger and fries, have a swim in the pool, maybe none of that actually. We are walking back to the open pit for the Mary Kathleen uranium mine. That is very cool blue water, isn't it? That is freaky, that's for sure. Contaminated with uranium, contaminated with copper. There'd be all sorts of minerals in there. The water is actually clear, isn't it? Like those reeds there, you can see the bottom of them. That is unreal. Now apparently, I'll, I don't know whether I'll get my dates exactly right, but this mine started up in the 60s, early 60s, ran until like 70. Then they closed it down. The uranium was supplied to the UK, and then it was reopened again from about 74 to 81. And then they shut it down in 81. I don't know whether it was shut down because they lost the contract or whether the ore was depleted. It's amazing to think that some plants can actually live in there. I don't know whether there'd be any invertebrates or any fish in there, but plants, yes. Jill, did you dip your shirt in that water? No. <laughs> <laughs>
very top of the track is like this. It's a bit, uh, I don't know, a few big rocks here and there, and it's a little bit of une uneven surface. But there are two-wheel drive cars up here, so people have been getting them up. No worries at all. The main part of the six kilometers drive to the mine site is on the old bitumen road, and it's pretty potholed. You gotta kind of weave your way through them, and there's certain spots you just can't avoid them altogether. But there's a whole host of traffic streaming up and down to come and have a look at this place. We're heading into the town site at Mary Kathleen, and we're just passing the servo. No queues at it, so that's good. No fuel either. That's bad. Good thing we filled up already. Yeah, exactly. We could have got it at 1981 prices if they were there. Some town cows. How now, town cow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I could help, but it just came to me. They look pretty good for the how. I think this is the town common right here. It looks like it, doesn't it? Good morning, Jeff Adventures. We find ourselves at the Mary Kathleen Abandoned Township, and we are on the outskirts, maybe the boondocks. The town itself is in that direction, about, oh, 500 meters. That is where all of the caravans are parked, and the, oh, pretty much every camper is over there. Nobody's out here in the boondocks. We're right on the very edge, living on the edge where we like to be. I just finished a little bit of video editing. Jill's having her coffee and reading, reading the news. Yeah, I'm bleeding for some reason. I'm gonna walk over to that red vine thing in the paddock across the way. I think it looks like a rose bush, but I'm not sure, so I'm just going to go check it out. As you can see, we're camped on a riverbank, and this river cuts right through the middle of Mary Kathleen. We're at the end of the town where the market gardens were. They grew a lot of their own vegetables out here in this town. Here's an old bitumen road, a couple of house slabs, so this was definitely part of the town. And that red flower that I could see is a bougainvillea. I'd say this looks like a shed, perhaps. Got poles around the perimeter for some sort of a shade structure and a little ramp to drive in. And I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, heaps of them, anyway, along this old road. When the town closed, they basically dismantled everything, sold it off. Some of the houses went to Cloncurry and to Mount Isa, and they're still there being used now. But that was a complete town that was born out of the uranium mine by Rio Tinto, and when the uranium mine closed, they disassembled it and tried to recover as much of their funds as they could. We're leaving our camp at Mary Kathleen. I said we're on the outskirts. I thought we were in the boondocks, as in the cheap seats, but I actually think this might be the executive's um, area of the town. I went for a walk in that little paddock and there were Lots and lots of sites, old house sites. You can see campers through here everywhere. It's a big town. You know, it held about, I don't know, what was it, 1,200 people or so, Jill, at its high heyday? So it's pretty spread out. There'd be, I, I'd guess, two or 300 campers back in here. But it doesn't feel like it's too oppressively packed. No, everyone has their space. They do. Everybody in these caravans absolutely loves it though because they can park their vans up on the concrete slabs. They're dead level. People taking their dogs for a walk down Main Street. That's a big dog to have in a caravan. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Normally you see little white fluffies, not those monster dogs. Or a cattle dog sized dog. Oops, there's a YouTube video called Mary Kathleen 1960. And it's about a 20 minute promotional video by Rio Tento to get people to move out here because it's such a idyllic location. They built a house a day. The town was built in a year. <laughs> Unreal. A radio guy just um, gave us a call. He recognized our rego and truck, the traffic control dude, and um, Terry's giving him some gear. We pulled up. He's like, Jaffa, hey Terry. We were like, oh geez, that's really, really cool. <laughs>